Okay, so let's figure out what two-fifths percent of three-fourths is. Obviously, that is the goal of this video. Now, um, what I want to state up front is if you don't understand basic percent, like things like 8% of 60, well, I have um, done multiple videos on percent. You can check those out in my uh, pre-algebra playlist. But if you're, you know, you know, not sure about the basic, how to handle basic percent problem like this, just stick with me. I'm going to review uh, the concept here. But this particular problem, okay, is a little bit, you know, it's still a basic percent problem, but we're dealing with what? We're dealing with fractions. And that tends to make a lot of math students very sad. They're like, uh, and angry. They're like, ah, I don't want to deal with fractions. I only like to do math problems where we have nice, simple numbers. Well, listen, fractions are numbers too, okay? We have to get to know them and get to like them because they are everywhere in mathematics. So uh, there's no, you know, reason to stress out here. What we have to do is just, you know, um, you know, break down this problem in little tiny steps, okay? And there's not that many steps involved, but you got to be able to handle a problem like this. Now, if you're a teacher, is really, really mean, or maybe, you know, the class is really loud, or they're just like, ah, maybe they, your math teacher's in a bad mood, and or you, you might be told, do this problem without the aid of a calculator. And you're like, oh, man, now, not only you're angry, your hair stands up, and you're like, oh, forget this, right? Well, listen, this is a common type of problem. I would, would give this, and say, hey, listen, let me see how well you know this. Do this problem without a calculator, you should be able to handle it, okay? Now, if you think you can do this problem without a calculator, if you think you could just do it at all, go ahead and pause the video and uh, give it a try. It's always the best way to, uh, when you're watching a video like this, at least my videos, is always try the problems. And then, of course, I'm going to uh, talk about um, uh, how we get to the solution. So I'm going to do this uh, problem two different ways, okay? And one way would be like with the aid of a calculator, and the second way is without a calculator, okay? So this is good stuff. You definitely want to stick around for a couple minutes here and learn more about percent. And obviously, if you want to continue to practice uh, more percent concepts, just check out uh, my additional videos in my pre-algebra playlist. Okay, so before we uh, start, though, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best, best online math help programs there is. I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, you can uh, follow the link in the description of this video. We'll take you to my math help program, but basically, I have 100-plus different math courses that I offer. I have the big courses like pre-algebra, geometry, algebra 2, algebra 1, college algebra, going to be launching pre-calculus here soon. So I have all those full courses. Uh, a lot of people just take my courses completely, like homeschoolers or some schools use my curriculum uh, for their students. But um, I also offer a lot of specialty courses uh, for test preparation, like the GED, SAT, ACT, ASVAB, Accuplacer, CLEP exams, uh, teacher certification exams, uh, nursing exams, whatever the case is. I have a lot of specialty courses. So yeah, it's taken me years to build my a program out, high quality instruction, thousands of problems solved. Uh, so if you need help with any of those particular type of uh, specialty needs, check out my program. I likely have the exam that you're studying for. But if you're in an algebra class and you're struggling, I can help you out as well. Okay, because a lot of people use my course instruction as just it's another style of instruction. Okay, and oftentimes you need things explained a little bit differently than maybe the way your current teacher, and I'm not trying to knock your teacher out there, but you know, it's good to have another way of um, uh, having concepts explained to you. Now, one thing that I must stress, okay, is the importance of note-taking. This is my golden rule of math over decades of teaching the subject. You're here to get better at math, so I'm going to give you the secret, okay? The secret to the universe of learning math is right here. And that is this, those students who take the best math notes almost always have the best math grades. And those students who don't like to take math notes, they're just like, I'm not into it. OK, I just like to memorize stuff by looking at things. Uh, or I have a really good friend, takes really great math notes, and then I just make copies of those notes and I study from those notes. Um, you know, but listen, I can tell you right now, you will pay a price if you don't take excellent notes. Right. I'm not talking about good notes. I'm talking about great notes, right? And you got to really work at this, all right? This is work. And that's why a lot a lot of people don't take great notes because you have to work at it and you're not forced to. Your teacher's trying to encourage you to do it, but 
You know, people think it's optional. Like, nah, well, I don't really want to do it. Listen, I don't want to, I didn't want to do it way back in the days. And then we're totally distracted, not only by the people, if you're in a physical classroom, um, but by that little thing called a cell phone. Thank goodness those things run around when I was in school because I would have been totally, totally lost. I was already distracted with my friends and doing whatever. But uh, it wasn't until later on, you know, that I became serious about studying that I learned about note taking. Of course, as a teacher, you see this being played out over the years and it just becomes an absolute law of the universe. <laughs> you got to take great math notes. There's no substitute to it. So if you need to improve, you know, start working on it, right? It's a skill. It's going to take you time, but just start getting better at it. Start making more of an effort at it. But in the meantime, you need something to study from. So I offer um, excellent notes, detailed, comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, and Trigonometry. You can find the links to those notes in the description of this video as well. All right, let's get into this problem. And uh, by the time we're done, all I want to see is a bunch of happy faces. Okay, so let's talk about two approaches to doing this problem. But first, let's just talk about a basic percent problem. So let's say 8% of 60. What do we do here? So I'm trying to find 8% of 60, for example. Well, the basic procedure is we need to, one, first, we got to change the percent to a decimal, okay? That's the first thing you can do. Now, notice I have here fraction, okay? You can, I'll talk about that in a second. But we need to change that percent to a decimal, okay? And then we need to multiply by this number, by the number. And when we do that, we get the answer, all right? So in this case, 8% is the same thing as 0 0.08. We multiply that by 60, and then we get our answer, okay? Now, I have right here fraction, all right? And that's because when we change our percent to a decimal, you can have a fraction equivalent, okay? For example, the decimal 0.5 is equal to the fraction 1 half, okay? So for every decimal, there is a fraction, uh, fractional equivalent, and uh, you can write every fraction as a decimal as well, okay? But most people, when you got your calculator, you're kind of going to stick with the decimal and multiply by the number, and that's perfectly fine, okay? All right, so this is the basic procedure of how to find a percent of a number. All right, now, of course, we have nice little numbers here, 8 and 60, but in this particular problem, we have fractions, so no sweat, okay? I just wanted to review this basic procedure first. So if you understand this, you're like, okay, I got that. Then let's move on to this problem, all right? So let's first use decimals, okay? So... Uh, if you have a calculator, you can be like, okay, two-fifths percent of three-fourths. Well, you can uh, take your fractions and write them as decimals. So two-fifths is the same as 0.4, okay? Uh, and three-fourths is the same thing as 0.75. So the equivalent problem here in uh, decimals, okay, we can go from fractions to decimals, is uh, find 0.4% of 0.75. Okay, well, how do I do that? Well, I got to take 0.4% and write that as a decimal, okay? So how do I do that, right? Decimal. Well, the way you do that, if you watched my other videos on percent, and maybe, maybe you haven't, okay? There's two uh, methods, okay? We could take 0.4. Let's just kind of go here. I have to write 0.4 as a decimal. So there's two things you need to do. The first, you can divide by 100 which is effectively the same thing as moving the decimal point two places over to the left. So here, here's the decimal point. If I move it two places over, I'm gonna get 0 0.004, okay? So that's what we need to do first. We take this 0.4% and write it as a decimal, which is 0 0.004, okay? Now that we got that, we were able to do that either by dividing by 100, okay, that's the way to get there, or moving the decimal point over two places to the left, it's the same thing, okay? But here, you're like, oh, okay, I see the decimal point, I'll move it over two places to the left, and now I have 0 0.004, and I'm gonna multiply by the number, just like we talked about in the previous problem. So I have my handy-dandy calculator up. Hey, you got your cell phone, right? So you can use that other than, uh, you know, social media and text messaging and WhatsApp and all that good stuff, okay? Um, and by the way, I'm not knocking cell phones and things like that, smartphones, because they're uh, uh, totally awesome. But, you know, they're com 
completely distracting as well. But on your phone, you have a calculator. So you can break out your phone, or if you have your little calculator there, you can type in 0 0.004 multiplied by 0 0.75, and we get 0 0.003. And if you got that as your answer, give yourself an A+, plus, a couple of stars, and a smiley face, right? If you're able to do that, um, without even me telling you anything, then you're, hey, you're on the right track. Right, so that's decimals. Now let's talk about the situation where your teacher says no calculators allowed. Now everyone goes like, what? I'm like, what are you talking about? No calculators allowed? Yes, yes. I would give this quiz to my class okay, because I want to see what they know. Okay. And it's not that difficult. So let's talk about the same problem, but this time we're going to just use fractions and no calculators. All right. So First things first, we're going to follow the same procedure, okay? Now, this two-fifths percent, all right, I still want to think of it as a decimal or the decimal uh, has a fraction equivalent. So how did I uh, get to, um, remember the last uh, part here, this first uh, when we we're doing those decimals, I switched my two-fifths uh, two into 0.4, okay? That was my number. This was the decimal equivalent, and then we divide it by 100, okay? Well, this time, I'm just going to be like, I, two fists, that's, I'm not going to turn it to a decimal. I'm just going to take two fists and divide it by 100, okay? So I'm not going to change two fists into a decimal. I'm just going to simply take two fists and divide it by 100 because that's how I'm going to um, uh, write that percent as a decimal or new fraction, okay, or a different fraction, all right, it's going to be the equivalent. So you're thinking to yourself, okay, two-fifths divided by 100, okay, this is what this means here, right? So because you are a fraction expert, I've, if you're struggling with fractions, no sweat, I have tons of videos in my pre-algebra playlist on fractions, but if you... Um, uh, recall, so we have two-fifths divided by 100. Why am I doing that? Because I'm changing this, um, I'm, I'm writing the number, okay? I'm taking it out, of this, whatever's in front of the percent sign, I got to write this as a decimal or its fraction equivalent, so I divide by 100. So I'm taking two-fifths divided by 100. Now remember, when you're dividing fractions, this number to the right, we have to multiply, so it gets flipped over, so 100 or 100 over 1 gets flipped over to 1 over 100, and the problem becomes multiplication. All right, so hopefully you remember how to multiply fractions. Okay, so uh, all we need to do is multiply the numerators and denominators. So now I have 2 times 1, which is 2, 2 times, or five, excuse me, 5 times 100, which is 500, and I can reduce that down uh, in, as the fraction 1 over 250. Okay, so that's it. So this is basically the equivalent of writing uh, uh, this number, okay, as a decimal, all right? But we have it in fraction form, okay? Now, remember what we did was we were going to write this as a decimal or in fraction form, which we, which we did, okay? Now, if this was a decimal, we would have it as a decimal, but we're going to take that and we're going to multiply by this number. Now, last time we converted both of these guys into decimals, but we're going to leave this, uh, we're just going to keep them as fractions. So two-fifths percent as a decimal, but really as that fraction. So two-fifths percent is equivalent to the fraction 1 over 250. I'm going to multiply it by the fraction 3 fourths. Now remember, when you're multiplying, you multiply this way, okay? So 1 times 3 is 3. 250 times 4 is 1,000. Okay, and that, remember our answer was 0 0.003. Let's go up here and just remember what we wrote, 0 0.003. So how do you say that, 0 0.003? This is three one thousandths. This is three one thousandths as well. Okay, so here is, you know, when we just multiply these fractions together, if you gave me this answer, I would in return give you an A+. Plus, 1,000% and a couple stars, all right? And, you know, everyone likes that smiley face. I'd be like, you're awesome. This answer is the same thing as this answer. They're equivalent. It's fully reduced. They mean the same thing. And here, you even, like, showed off to your teacher. Be like, I don't even need my calculator. I just knocked this problem out, bop, 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 boom, okay? So, you know, uh, percent problems, you're not going to always have nice, simple little, you know, uh, integer values, whole numbers, you know, 
uh, things like that. You know, we want to spice things up, throw some fractions in there. Remember, fractions are numbers too. We need to know how to work with them. Okay, and I promised you, by the time you finish this video, you would end up with a big smiley face. You'd be like, oh, okay, I got that, I got that. And um, I know you do. Now, remember, it's not enough just to watch me do this stuff. You have to practice this. So even if you want to do this problem again using fractions, okay, you should just do it and maybe go to that part of the video that reviews how to do it. But just don't walk away thinking, okay, I rem I'll remember this. No, you won't remember this. You have to practice this stuff, okay? All right, but in some way, if this video helped you out, if you enjoyed it, if you liked it, okay, please consider smashing that like button. That helps me out. And uh, if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. Been on YouTube for a long time. It's a great platform for someone like myself who's obsessed with teaching math in a clear and understandable way. That's my goal with uh, every topic that I teach. So on my channel, you'll find like hundreds of videos, basic to advanced, and I'm going to be posting new stuff all the time. Okay, I'm actually going to get into more advanced math and more basic. I'm going to just keep teaching, keep teaching, because, you know, uh, you know, I want you to stay excited about learning math. And once you start learning or understanding and you start becoming successful math, then you can remain excited about it. But nothing is more frustrating than you know, being stuck, you know, not like, you know, uh, I'm always making mistakes and, you know, just being in a state of frustration. That's why I, I stress things about like note taking. Okay. I'm not being, you know, like, Hey, I'm just not trying to waste your time. If you, you're here to get better at math, I'm telling things, you know, that maybe you don't want to hear, but I'm telling you how to go from point A to point B in math, right? If you really want to learn this, and there's only one way to approach math, and that is to really truly want to learn the material because anything less, you're just going to be guessing and it's going to be spotty, and then you're going to get a lot of frustration and whatever, okay? You're here because you want to learn this stuff, and you can um, just more than learn it. You can be great and just keep, keep going as far as you possibly can go in math, and I'm pretty sure that is a very long way from where we're doing, uh, what kind of math we're doing right here. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.